So we're going to wrap things up on acetabulum fracture anatomy and classification and radiographic workup in this uh, next uh, set of uh, slides here. We've talked about, um, in the last slides, we talked a lot about the, the Jude Letrinelle classification. Uh, we went through the elementary fracture types, right? So posterior wall, posterior column, anterior wall, anterior column, and then the transverse fracture type, right? So now we're going to go through the associated fracture types. Um, and then hopefully we'll have it uh, wrapped up. So posterior column, posterior wall fractures um, are pretty much as, as you would think. The posterior wall is the same as in the elementary fracture patterns. The posterior column fracture begins typically in that cavity created by the posterior wall. Uh, but the fracture pattern is similar to what you see in the elementary fracture patterns. And you can have a central displacement or dislocation of the femoral head. Um, and the displacement of the posterior wall usually is greater than the posterior column. On an AP x-ray, you'll see a disrupted ileoischial line, disrupted posterior rim, posterior dislocation, perhaps, of the femoral head. So maybe something like this. Uh, you have this AP radiograph. You see a disruption of the ileoischial line. Okay, and you also see that there's something going on up here, too, right? That's your posterior wall, but you can see here that uh, this this fracture line here represents there's something going on in the posterior column and it may be a little unclear and you see that there's there's a fracture line here as well right here's your posterior wall fragment GDA views are going to help show this to you better uh, again the, it's a posterior injury right so you'll have an intact iliopectineal line right that anterior column anterior column is intact posterior wall fracture is very nicely seen on the obturator oblique and the direction of the line detaching the posterior column usually can be seen, which may split the ischium and not necessarily involve the um, obturator foramen. So here's that uh, obturator oblique view. You're going to see the posterior wall fracture. You may get your so-called gull sign, right? So you may have that, uh, that gull sign, perhaps, if it's displaced up where the head dislocated, maybe. Uh, iliac oblique view is going to show you that posterior column fracture, right? How much fracture displacement there is, and then it's going to show you if it goes through the greater sciatic notch, or you know what level it's at. So here's that, here's that posterior column fracture, very very clearly seen here, and you know there's a posterior wall as well, right? And CT scans will help show it. So the posterior wall component is variable. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, this is the next fracture type, the transverse and posterior wall fracture. It's actually a pretty common fracture type. In Letronel series, it was uh, fairly common. Uh, the posterior wall component uh, is variable. Um, but the fact that you have a posterior wall means that you almost always have to approach these posteriorly, as I mentioned before. The transverse component extends posteriorly to the notch uh, from the posterior wall fracture. And the transverse component itself is just like it is with elementary fracture patterns. And it could be juxtatectal infratectal, transtectal. Now, as opposed to the T-shaped fracture, the obturator foramen is typically intact. Okay, um, You can have a T-shaped fracture with a posterior wall, so that's kind of like a variant of the transverse posterior wall. Um, and you may see that as well. Uh, rotation is similar to transverse fracture patterns. So here's an example of the transverse posterior wall, right? So inverted Y, okay, so inverted Y, uh, cotyloid fossa, right? And then you get your transverse fracture pattern, but then you also have the posterior wall as well, right? So transverse posterior wall, okay? Hopefully that's pretty clear. AP radiographs, all your vertical and oblique landmarks of the acetabulum are broken. Oftentimes you'll have a posterior hip dislocation. So here you can see there's been, you know, sort of this medial, displacement of the femoral head. It's not articulating with the dome at all. It looks like there's perhaps some other fracture fragment out there. Obturator oblique is going to show you the obliquity of the transverse fracture line. You're going to get to see the integrity of the obturator ring, right? You want to see is this a T-shaped or not. And then you're going to see that posterior wall. So here you can see the obturator ring. You can confirm are there indeed any fracture lines through here. I don't think I see any. I think this is a shadow here. Uh, you see disruption of the iliopectineal line, a big posterior wall fragment out here. Okay. And um, if I'm looking correctly at this, 
x-ray, it looks like maybe there's a baby in here. It looks like this is a skull and um, looks like uh, a skeleton inside the skeleton. Okay, well, um, iliac oblique x-ray is going to show you the uh, integrity of the iliac wing, right? That's what you see on the iliac oblique, and you'll be able to see the posterior column, right? So, oh, there's that baby again. So, here's the um, posterior column displacement, uh, head displaced medially, and here's this unfortunate, uh, unfortunate baby again. You can see the spinal column, ribs, and head in there. Um, here is the uh, CT scan um, showing the uh, transverse posterior wall fracture. What about T-shaped? Well, uh, T-shaped or T-type fracture includes all fractures that have a transverse component with an associated vertical component. The transverse component is just like a transverse fracture. It's just when you have this T-shaped fracture, it becomes very hard to control operatively, and you often have to, to, to go to both sides or do extensile approaches depending on how displaced they are. So Judea and Lettern all consider T-shaped fractures with a posterior wall component to be a variant of the transverse posterior wall, which I talked about before. But here's the T-shaped fracture, right? So you have sort of, you know, so you have your inverted Y, you have your cotyloid fossa, right? You have your transverse component, whoops, you have your transverse component, but then you also have this fracture line that comes down, right? Now in this case it shows an example coming down at an angle, but the point is, the point is that you have, as opposed to the transverse fracture where this and this are connected, okay? When you have a transverse fracture and, and, and both of these segments are connected, you can control the entire inferior segment, right? from one side. So you can come posteriorly and you can rotate the entire piece. You may have to do some indirect reduction to get this, but it's essentially connected. Once you get this vertical fracture line coming down here, they're now disconnected. So if I come posteriorly to control this posterior part of the fracture and reduce this to this, I'm really not controlling this piece at all. Okay, and that, that's the trick. That's the problem with the T-shaped fracture. So the roof segment remains attached to the iliac wing. The orientation of the stem of the fracture is variable, right? So we'll come back here. This one, it's, it's, it's very oblique. I mean, it could be down here. It really doesn't matter that much. Once, the, once this becomes detached from this, you know, once this is detached from this, then it's, it's you know, you, that's where you lose control of it. Or you don't get control indirectly very easily. Um, so you can get this saloon door sort of phenomenon with a head going in between. And this is all the directions of the, that sort of vertical stem fracture where it can exit. Um, let's look at the AP radiograph. So here you can see all your landmarks are disrupted, right? So uh, it's a trend, there's a transverse component, right? So iliopectineal, ilioischial line, they're both disrupted. Head often travels medially like it does with a lot of acetabulum fractures, right? Don't you see a, a sort of... Uh, common theme here, it seems like almost always you get these the head either going posteriorly or going medially, right, with a lot of acetabulum fracture types. Uh, on the obturator oblique view, you're going to see the fracture orientation a little bit better. Um, you're going to see a fracture of the issue pubic ramus. You're going to see, as shown here on this obturator oblique view, uh, disruption of the iliopectineal line, and here's that fracture down here, right, so that's what could makes the T-shaped fracture. Iliac oblique, you're going to see the fracture of the posterior column shown here. Okay, so here's that disruption of the posterior column. All right, and again, you can see that the head is not congruent, right? Like, look at this. Let me go back and look at, see, look how the head on the iliac oblique of the opposite hip is nicely congruent. Now we come here, head is not congruent, right? Dome is here. Head is here, not congruent, okay? Here's a T-shaped fracture shown through a CT scan. So, a couple more fracture types. Anterior wall or column, posterior hemitransverse. Well, it's a little different than a T-shaped fracture. Um, posterior column fracture is often like a pure transverse you know, fracture. It's often non-displaced, So, but it's a hemitransverse. It doesn't go all the way across. The anterior column fracture is a little bit variable, but uh, usually that's the part that's more displaced. The anterior part is more displaced than the posterior part. And the roof fragment remains attached to the iliac wing. 
Okay, so as opposed to a bulk column, you still have some of the roof attached to the sciatic buttress, right? But here's your answer column, posterior hammer transverse, right? So the posterior column component is just like what you get with the transverse fracture, but the answer column component is basically not like a transverse, like for instance, like the T-shape, but it's like an anterior column, so it can it can come up here, it can come here, it can be a little lower, but it's some type of fracture that comes like this, okay? AP radiograph usually shows as an elementary anterior column fracture. Femoral head follows the anterior component, um, disrupts the anterior and posterior rim iliostral line, iliopectineal line. So seen here, you see disruption of both the lines, a lot of medial displacement of the femoral head, right? Look at that compared to the compared to the dome. Jude view shows the anterior lesion better, right? So shown here, a lot of disruption of the iliopectineal line here and here, okay? Iliac oblique best illustrates the direction of the, direction of the posterior fracture line. And, if there is an iliac wing fracture, you know, like an anterior column extending up into the iliac wing, you're going to see it here. Okay, so for instance, it looks to me like perhaps there's a fracture line coming down here. Okay, and you can see that there's this, there's this disruption here going through the posterior column. CT scan helps to show that, you know, medial to lateral anterior column fracture line and that anterior to posterior hemi-transverse fracture line. Okay? Not the same case, but you sort of get the idea. All right, 3D recon shown here as well, showing that you know large anterior column fracture coming down through the iliac wing, and then the posterior hemitransverse here. Okay, last fracture type associated both column fractures. Now, what, like I said before, this is the equivalent of the AO type C periarticular fractures, right, where it's dissociated, right, all the articular fragments are dissociated from the from the uh, sciatic buttress. So no articular skeleton remains attached to the axial skeleton. Uh, oftentimes you get the central dislocation and you may have something called a spur sign. This is not the same as the gall sign and you will see this on an iliac I'm sorry, on the obturator oblique view, um, and it represents what's left of the inter of the uh, of the iliac wing posteriorly. So I'll show you what I mean. And basically, you know, on the, when you get an obturator oblique view, it represents the spur sign is represented by this piece of bone here. But anyway, this is the this is the associated both column fracture. There are many very fracture types. It, the fracture lines can look a little different, but essentially, you can see no articular pieces are attached to the sciatic buttress back here, okay? So they're all free-floating and oftentimes the head is, you know, sitting here and occasionally you can get something called, you know, secondary congruence. This is only seen with an associated both column fracture, secondary congruence, and it's basically because all the fracture fragments are free-floating, nothing is re remaining as opposed to you know, I can go back a few slides, as opposed to what we often see with the femoral head displacing medially, like shown here, right, with the associated both column, all those fracture fragments can now travel with the head, because they're free. And if they, you know, or is everything else here is incongruent, if this piece was broken free, it can now reorient itself and kind of become our articulating congruently with the femoral head and that's when you get potentially you can get secondary congruence so it can only happen with an associated both column fracture it certainly doesn't always happen but it can only happen with this type uh, on the AP radiographs all your landmarks are disrupted you can get this central dislocation of the femoral head uh, and uh, you know many of these other findings inward displacement of the posterior column displaced acetabular roof so here's an associated both column fracture. You can see they've also applied a pelvic binder. I can kind of see some of those you know, clips from the pelvic binder here, uh, perhaps. Um, obturator oblique, again, it's a disruption of iliopectineal line. Um, spur sign is going to be seen, right? So here's that, 
spur sign. So the, the femoral head is medial. Here you can see there perhaps is some degree of, you know, trying to be secondarily congruent. Of, uh, joint fragments are moving with the head. But here's that spur sign, right? This is where the acetabulum belongs, reduced all the way back there. Okay, that's the spur sign. Two day views are going to show on the iliac oblique the anterior rim of the acetabulum fracture, the iliac wing fracture. You're going to see a lot better. Um, and you're going to see how much that posterior column is uh, fractured, right? So here, if there was, let's just say if you had some big iliac wing fracture, you know, coming up through here, you're going to see it right there. Uh, you're going to see if this quadrilateral plate blow out, and you're going to see how displaced the posterior column fracture is for instance, okay. CT scans kind of give you some sense of where that spur sign is. So here's your sciatic buttress. Here's that uh, spike and then when you get your, you, know, you, you rotate the pelvis this way and then you get your obturator oblique view, you're going to see that, that, that spike sticking out and spur sign, okay. All right, so um, that pretty much wraps up what really consists of the basic anatomy, radiographic assessment, classification, and uh, in the next set of lectures, we're actually going to get into the um, into some of the uh, surgery, right, and approaches and treatment. Thank you.